Hey y'all, this is Joe from the porch here at the tiny house at St. Bernard Acres. Uh, I'm waiting on it to dry out some so I can try to do some mowing here. And something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, the big thing, you know, using reclaimed material to build the tiny house. Um, and as much as I would like to do that, I, I think it, it's, it's not that easy to do. Maybe it's my area. Uh, there's not that much stuff available. And you go to these, it's become such a fad and such a uh, ecological thing and, you know, you go to the places that have the surplus building materials or the reusable building materials and they want as much as new because I know people are you know trying to go that route so sometimes it's not reasonable to do that um, I would like to it would be nice but it just it's not going to be conducive to us to be able to do that um, you know, I look on Craigslist, and there's nothing there. You know, if I want to travel to a bigger city, if I want to drive to Columbus, you know, for an hour and a half to pick up some material, that's one thing. But then you factor in the gas and your time and, you know, how much are you really saving? When I bought these windows, these two windows that I'm starting with, we went to... Uh, uh, discount supply place that sells windows and they got decent prices on windows but you have to pick and choose from what they have it's not like you know they order anything standard they're what they are I think primarily are used windows and windows that have been ordered from you know Home Depot or Lowe's or something and were never picked up they buy them at a discount and then turn around and, and try to sell them. And we could not find two of the kind that we wanted that were the same price or same size. Um, and next payday, when we go to buy a couple of more, they may not have them. Uh, we may not even be able to get close to the same size. So. We have a particular style we want to stick with, and this is going to be our forever home when, you know, we finally move out here and uh, get uh, our homestead going out here. I, I, I don't want to use, use you know, inferior product. I don't want to use recycled products that were designed for another use, but use them here, you know, to uh, make it cheaper or say, you know, oh, yeah, I built my whole house out of reclaimed lumber. You know, that would be nice, but like I said, it's just not feasible for us. And I'm not going to try to do it. I went to Lowe's and I bought these windows. This is a stock size for Lowe's. I always have them. I know in a couple weeks I want to go buy two more. There they are. Uh, it's more expensive, but you know, for what I have available to me, that was my option. Um, this whole thing, I said it before, this whole thing with going off the grid and, and, and you know, rain catchment and all this. It is primarily an economic factor. Um, it's not to be this prepper and be able to survive the Holocaust or whatever because I'm just not, you know, of that mind necessarily. It will be good, you know, if, if something does happen and I have my own power and my own water, I don't have to worry about those things uh, in my own garden. But it was primarily 
for economic reasons, not for ecological reasons. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, lower my carbon footprint or shrink my carbon footprint, whatever it is. You know, I, 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 it is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to just jump into it, you know, and say, okay, I'm off the grid. You know, how the hell am I going to live? You know, I wasn't ready for this. You know, I'll do it on a gradual, you know, uh, basis. And if it takes me a couple of years, it takes me a couple of years. I'm not going to rush it. Uh, you know, I have basically an unlimited supply of pallets. And I know, you know, that... You can build all kinds of stuff out of your pallets. You can make all kinds of things out of your pallets. But most of the pallet wood is secondary woods that aren't really much good for anything else. And unless, I think, unless you want to spend a bunch of money and a bunch of time sealing it all and, you know, the maintenance in it and everything, to me, that's not worth it. You know, I would rather buy new and buy wood and use it as it's intended to be. Um, I'm building a house. I'm going to buy material that is designed to build a house, not what I can find. Um, we, you know, if, if that sounds snotty or, or, you know, stuck up or whatever, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to be that way. You know, I'm just saying five years from now, I don't want to worry about it. When I'm finished building, I want it to be done and... You know, I don't have to be replacing anything. I don't have to do anything over again. Uh, so, you know, that's my thoughts on using reclaimed materials to build the tiny house. Uh, if I had a big supply available to me, you know, it might be a different story. If uh, I was in the business of tearing down houses and, you know... I mean, we tore down a house. We bought a house next door to us in Wheeling. And I tore it down uh, to make a bigger yard for my dogs. It was the house next to mine. And uh, some incredible material in that. It was all oak, you know. It was, it was a hundred and some years old. Uh, but I did that before I was doing this. Before I knew this was what I was going to do. And I gave it all away. Uh, it was a, geez, a two hundred or a two bedroom, one bath house. Uh, like I said, it was over a hundred years old and gigantic oak beams. You know, a lot of it you could tell was, it was you know, hand cut. And there were I have some pictures on Facebook. There were some. 10 by 10 beams and 8 by 10s that were, you know, 20 feet long that was solid oak. But I didn't know then what I know now, you know. Uh, I could have brought all of that when I didn't have this place, you know. Uh, had I known I was going to be doing this and buying this place, I could have brought all of that out to this barn. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, taking it piece you know, taking pieces at a time to a mill and have that lumber milled down to what I wanted. But, like I said, I didn't know then. And I can't go around buying houses just to tear them down so I can have the lumber out of them. Uh, there are too, too many people now. I mean, it's become such a thing that people are, you know, in instead of, uh, you know, come and tear down my barn, you can tear it down for free if you haul everything, you know, you can have everything for free if you haul it away. Those days are gone, pretty much. Uh, if there is any value in the wood in that barn, 
Nobody's going to let you tear it down and take it all for free. Uh, there are companies out there now that will come and buy my barn just so they can tear it down and haul it away. You know, and that's what you're competing against. And if somebody's got a building or, or a house or a barn that they're willing to let you have for free if you tear it down and clean it up, then that means it's probably not any good anyway. And uh, they want you to come and clean up their mess is what it is. So I, I think it's harder today to try to, to build with reclaimed materials. You know, if, if you got it just to build a, a chicken coop or a shed or, you know, outbuilding on your property or, you know, someplace to store your firewood, I mean, that would be different. But uh, not the house you're going to live in. Um, I want my house to present well. So, I can't, even though I could have bought the windows for half of what these cost me, I can't put different sized windows, you know, uh, around the house. They're all going to be the same. They're going to be the same style, you know, energy efficient windows. Because I want it to look nice, you know, that's, uh, that's, to me, that's as big a concern as how cheap I can build it. Um, so if it's going to cost more, you know, to buy like that, to buy material like that, then it will take a little bit longer to build it, and I'm okay with that. To me, that's a fair trade. But I applaud anybody who wants to try to build everything they have out of out of reclaimed materials. I think it's wonderful. I'm glad you're doing it because I'm not able to and uh, I think people should. But you will not see me with a hundred pallets out here trying to break them apart so I can get the wood out of it and uh, use it to build my house with or you know inside my house. You know, I have a few pallets at work that have awesome one by six, you know, oak on it. I mean, you know, there are select pallets that we've got set aside for me to go pick up. I'm going to pick them up this week. That's why I'm taking the trailer back with me. I've got a bunch of treated lumber at home that's left over. Uh, to start working on the skirting of this, you know, at least the front of this. I've got enough material at home pretty much to do it the way I want to do it. So I'll load up all that wood. I'll load up the pallets from work that have the really good, uh, the good wood on it. And that would be okay for shelving and, and you know, things like that. Not for siding, not for paneling, you know. Uh, our walls, you know, are going to be new sheetrock or new drywall or new tongue and groove pine you know various things now I, I you know but it's not going to be used stuff and it's not going to be stuff I have to worry about it shrinking or swelling or cracking or you know any of this kind of stuff um, maybe I don't have the skill set to work with that kind of stuff I mean, that could be part of my problem. I don't know. Uh, but I would rather go ahead and buy the new stuff, put it up one time, tape and float the drywall, paint it, and not worry about it until it needs to be painted again. Uh, I, I don't want to have to, you know, spend my years out here replacing things or redoing things because something wore out that I got used. So that's why I'm not doing uh, a bunch of reclaimed material on mine, and I've had people ask, you know, wouldn't it be better to do that? In an ideal world, it would be better to do that. Uh, and like I said, for outbuildings, for chicken coops, for sheds, you know, for storing your firewood, keeping it dry, 
that's good. I mean, that's fine for that kind of wood because, you know, <laughs> when it starts going bad, you're storing your firewood there and it starts wearing out and you got to get new stuff. You can burn the shit. Uh, you know, that's what pallets are to me. We used to build horrendous bonfires with pallets or barn fires, uh, campfires. You know, our Boy Scout troop, we had a, uh, every two years we had a district-wide camp out, and we would have a, a campfire contest. And we always won because we would, you know, do our pallets. I'd bring them, you know, take a hundred pallets out there. <laughs> we'd have a fire going a hundred feet in the air. Uh, you know, they're short-lived, but they're impressive-looking fires. That's what I've always done with, you know, with pallets. Um, I'm rethinking uses for it now, of course. Uh, but I, I, they just look junky, if I may say that. Uh, you know, if it's free material, that's great. And if that's what you can afford or that's what, what you want, then awesome. More power to you, you know. I'm, I understand completely and I can totally appreciate that. But I just don't want our place to look like we've got a bunch of junk laying around. Uh, I want it to look nice. That's an important thing to me. And if that's a character flaw, then so be it. That's just the way I am. And that's the way Gail is. I mean, Gail doesn't want a bunch of junky looking stuff. You know, regardless of, you know, it was free to build, you know. If it's something I'm going to build using pallets, I can probably buy $50 worth of material, $100 worth of material, and build it. You know, and build it out of the right material that will last for a long time. But I just wanted to put my thoughts out there, whether you agree with them or not. And to answer that question um, of why I'm not using, you know, reclaimed wood to build a tiny house. And I'm going off the grid and all this. You know, I mean, almost, some people, it's almost like accusatory questions coming from them, you know. I'm not trying to save the planet. I'm trying to save me and my little area out here. That's my primary focus when it comes to saving something. And uh, I, I applaud you that are trying to do it, and, you know, you got my support 100%. But that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I hope that clears things up for you. Uh, this is Joe from the porch of the tiny house out at St. Bernard Acres. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. And feel free to like, subscribe, comment, bitch at me, whatever. <laughs> you know. Uh, but we're going to continue on with how we're doing it. And that's not going to change. So don't try to convince me I need to do it a different way. You know, uh, I'm paying for it. I'll do it the way I want it done. And sorry if it doesn't fit with your agenda. It fits my agenda. Because I'm going to be living in it and I'm going to be living out here. But enough said on that. Thank you all.